Good afternoon, everyone. Remember when Biden said food shortages, they're going to be real. Good thing Gates is the largest farmland holder in America. Speaking of farmlands, Wales, cold call agents. Hey, can we buy your farm? We want to put trees on it, carbon offset. Oh, wait, where's the food going to go? Up and up like it is in the States. Bottleneck after bottleneck. Now Shanghai ports, plural, closed. Fertilizer emergency being declared already. Look at that. Brazil, 24% of all their fertilizer needs from Russia, but all these other countries as well. Dovetailing into Guatemala. Diluting nutrients to stretch supplies. That means decreased yield to me. More inflation as food prices skyrocket, and you'll see why. Silver futures, they're taking physical delivery right now. The run is on. And these food shortages, they're about setting the stage for rationing. But in the field in front of my house today, nettles, henbit, dandelions, clover. Let's talk about the benefits of those and how to make a tincture from it. Fresh food, free food, if you know how to forage. The new normal? Uncertainty is the new normal. War, pandemics, partisan politics, and Jerome Powell. There's a consistent sense of tension, fear, and anxiety since this pandemic. The stock market's gotten crushed, our national debt soared, and inflation pummeling most Americans. Since March 2020, gold's up 30% and silver doubling. Now we have Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo all forecasting gold well above $2,000 an ounce in 2022, and even potential price targets of $3,000. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver, and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Call 1-800-356-4470 for a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And we'll start off with some farms in Wales. Now, what is happening is somehow they're getting a registry or list of farmers and... Property agents are just cold calling, saying, hey, we have offers on your farm. Do you want to sell your farm? Because they're offering far more money than the market price to buy these farms and then plant trees and use them as a carbon offset credit connected directly into the carbon credit system, which will also be plugged into with your personal carbon allocation credits. Seems like it is going to be a new pillar of the economy. That kind of real money wouldn't be going in there if it wasn't. Now off a of C-SPAN here, remember the famous speech where Biden says, food shortages are coming, it's going to be real. And I remember reading about the dependency of Russian fertilizers across the globe. So I was able to get this chart here off the telegram. Russian commodities reach 24% of the fertilizer in Brazil. So you think about how much food Brazil produces for the rest of the world and you go, whoa. That's not inbound. That could be a serious problem because smaller nations are already reeling from food price increases. And now we're seeing the fertilizer shortages slash fertilizer emergencies in the smaller nations. Let's take a look right here. Guatemala. Coffee farmers slashing fertilizer purchases. They can't afford it. It's so expensive. And now they're diluting nutrients to stretch supplies. That just means... Decline in yield, pure and simple. Mega emergency. So I thought I'd bring it back to this chart here. So let's look at a list of here. Global buyers and the dependency on Russian fertilizers. This is from the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. So the Russian Federation exports fertilizer to all of these countries here. Now Mongolia, look at that, about 98% of all the fertilizer they get comes from one country. But over to Central and South America, Brazil, 
is at that midway point of 24%. So I use that as the benchmark. Anything greater than 24%, I put a yellow box around that to see what the dependency is on fertilizers from Russia. And if Guatemala's already into a massive fertilizer shortage, they're more dependent on fertilizer from Russia than even Brazil is. And then look how it just continues to cascade upward in the percentages. Costa Rica almost at 30%, right along with Mexico. And Ecuador and Panama straddling the 30%. And then Peru, 40%. And then Honduras, half. So when you look at that list of nations, southern production in the southern hemisphere was slated to offset some of this in the northern hemisphere from the shortages. But it looks like not. And, you know, a lot of those countries also warm year round. So there's continuous fruit production, agricultural production that finds its way up into different markets here in the U.S. It looks like that is going to be significantly cut. So now we have to start to work the numbers backward. How much does each country export? What type is it? Is it tropical fruit, stone fruit? Who knows? Veg. But that's not going to be coming in Mexico, you know, sends an enormous amount of food to the states. Fertilizer production cuts there. Okay, maybe they can get it from the states or from Canada down to Mexico and increase the amount to be seen, but it seems like the cart has been upset already. Guatemala in shortages, and you can see they're not even the most reliant country on Russian fertilizers. They're way down in the middle. But it's a good thing that the largest farmland owner in America is Bill Gates. Just saying, it's a good thing. Look how many acres across all of these very productive states. So if there would be a shortage, power outage, infrastructure breakdown somewhere across the Mississippi, there's a lot of land to the east and an enormous amount of land to the west. So we're talking about inflation. Everything's going to skyrocket in price. It already is. And now... Russia is confirming that they are moving to a gold-backed ruble and gold for commodities. And I see something like this. The demonetized currencies is just a very short list here. This is a 20-pager, but this is just two pages out of it. Look how many currencies in the modern era have collapsed. Food for thought looking at this one. And that's from the book, Fiat Paper Money, History and Evolution of Our Currency. Because as it's rolling forward, these countries in yellow are going to be demanded by Russia to pay either in rubles or gold to get anything coming out of that country. Which is going to upset the paper trades and the leveraged gold and silver delivery contracts. And if these major superpowers are going to go into declining currencies, well, it looks like there's not very much left to decline to the zero point. After 1971, coming off the gold standard, the U.S., look at the decline in purchasing power of Swiss franc, euro, U.S. dollar, and the great British pound. I was surprised to see the pound was ahead of the dollar in uh, devaluation. But again, if they're going to move to gold, Bitcoin, and ruble settlement, these are going to collapse vertical down off of a cliff here. And you can see why there's so much interest now in taking physical delivery of metals. Silver specifically. I was reading there was just a 600,000 ounce drawdown. And it looks like the physical delivery, at least what's registered for the contracts at expiration for pulling out of the vault... Put it on the truck. We'll see you later. We're not even going to move it to another vault. Just put it in the truck. Bye. That's what's happening. And this is something that has not been seen before at this level. Maybe back when the Hunt brothers were trying to corner the silver market, yes. But in anything what we consider the last 20 to 25 years. And this is something very special that we're seeing here. The rush, the run on precious metals. Delivery times extended out a month, six weeks, if you can get it. Premium prices over spot, just ridiculous, six, eight, ten dollars. And now the real players coming in to take, you know, hundreds of thousands of ounces out of, like the Comex, for example, their London Bullion Metals Exchange, saying we want the physical and we want it and we're going to take it out of here. 
Now that is a run on metals. So the inflation's gonna catch right up with that. And Russia going over to Bitcoin and a gold backed currency to trade in commodities. And now the ruble's gonna be pegged to a gold backed currency. And you know, Russia's saying, you need to pay us in rubles or we're not gonna give you anything. We're cut off all the natural gas, all the energy, everything. So you're about to see a full shift in economics in the way the very value of money is determined on the planet as we move forward. And it's interesting that we're in the collapse phase now when the fertilizer shortages are going to put people on the street with the price of food rising, fertilizer shortage, herbicide shortage, way before Biden said anything about shortages or the Ukraine started way before that. There were already going to be fertilizer shortages. So that was already baked into the cake. Look at Shanghai here. Ships waiting to load or discharge. They're going into a full lockdown in Shanghai. So this is definitely going to probably go vertical off the chart. Like everything we've seen vertical in the last month and a half. But as those ports shut down, and that would be Ningbo as well. So anything coming from China is now going to be even slower than it was. I mean, exponentially slower than it was. So if you're ordering on Amazon, order quick. Things are running out. So these food shortages are about setting the stage for rationing. And I agree. It's more about taking control of the world's food supply, but I will go ahead and agree with that. Rationing is inbound. You're going to get a digital rationing card. And here's the thing. It is springtime. And how many of you are out there looking for wild herbs and foraging right now, doing something similar to this, drying those out? Because as we move into these last cold spells, if you will, into... April and May, there's, a, there's real names for these. Red bud winter, early April. Dogwood winter, obviously, because the dogwoods have all flowered. And then if the late freeze comes, then those blooms are lost. And then a locust winter, blackberry winter. Mid-May, which is a terrible one because literally the blackberries have flowered. And you'll lose your fruit for the year. And then we got the birch winter, which is nearly June. So this has all happened before. Obviously, they have names for it. So... It's encoded that cold spells can still come and wipe out food. Well, what I have here is a field of purple dead nettle. You can read all about it, what you can do with this. Tinctures, put it on salads, uh, steep it in alcohol for a couple of months and use those drops as a tincture for many uh, a different ailment. So what I'm going to do is as you can see, this red all around me here is this field. So I'm going to go ahead, pick a colander of this, and then I'm going to run it through a blender on batch number one, pour the alcohol in there, and then see what it turns out like after a month or so. And then batch two is going to be just like this. I'm going to remove the stems, I think. You know what? I, I don't know. I'll feel it when I get in there. And then just use the leaves. To steep in another jar not pulverized at all to see what the difference is going to be and uh, the benefits of having this around your herbal medicine kit and what's coming up early in the season here free food for me I look at this and I go hmm free food and this was what I was able and again about 20 minutes or so to find right around where I was recording that video Massive amounts of clover, dandelions are popping everywhere, the purple dead nettle, and also the hen bit, which is on the left at the nine o'clock position. Purple dead nettle is what it looks like. Easy to find. It's of the mint family. And there is what they call a look-alike, which is hen bit, but they're both edibles and you can use them fresh on salads right now. Pretty purple flowers. If you just want to take the flower off or if you want to use a leaf along with that, Trim to the supple part of the stems. Now the clovers here, pick carefully, but there's some nice supple young green ones sprinkled in there and especially on the edge and periphery. But you'll know that you have the purple dead nettle or the hen bit because they have this square stem. Telltale for mint every single time. And then there's an enormous amount of these small fine hairs running up and down the stem. After picking those herbs, I was able to put these into some alcohol. That's what it looks like there. That is the dead nettle. So I'll let that steep for a month. That's the full plan. I didn't pulverize it. 
But here I did put it into a blender really quickly. I just went and chopped it. You know, I didn't really try to turn it into a powder or anything. But again, then I mixed in 50% vodka with these. And obviously I dated them on there. So I'll wait for these and I'll use them as tinctures. And then the hen bit, which I showed you there also with that purple flower. That's what this one is, the hen bit. And you can see the, the leaves and also the purple flowers a little bit differently. And then I did the same thing. I went up and I, I ground those up quickly in the blender, but then I'll let these steep in here. I didn't have enough to fill the jar exactly, but close enough. And again, these were dated for the 28th here. So I'll get into those another month later or so. Then I have one that I've been working with here. This is the goji berry. And I've had this for about three months steeping like this. Same thing in the 50%. So you know, you can you read about how to use these different kind of tinctures after you've let them steep for a month or so. And the reason I would even be doing my time like this, I come and I say the videos, we're going into food shortages, we're going into complete lockdown of the economy, and I'm talking breaking supply chains, non-deliverables into stores. You know, at the in middle of the, the summer, it's going to be a completely different world. And as we come into harvest season and the true numbers are coming out of what we did not grow because of the Russian fertilizer crisis going on, our world is literally going to shift. It's going to shift to the point where people are going to be so terrified that they're going to starve or their kids aren't going to have enough food. It's going to shake the fabric of our society. So if you can learn about wild foraging, like in addition to these being what I can steep out and you know, get something for my herbal medicine kit here, my cabinet, whatever. These can be fresh greens at the moment too. So I'm looking, you know, okay, this is what they, I keep pulling that one back up. So this is what they look like in the, the fresh form in the alcohol. But at the same time, you can go out and trim every one of those. And that's the reason I did that. I saved enough for a salad tonight. Well, it's going to be regular spinach and lettuce but then i'm going to add all that i'm going to prepare and uh, you know take the green away from the dandelions and uh, clovers tastes a little bit lemony a little bit citrusy and then i'm going to put uh, a sprinkling and handful of these and then the purple flowers on top as a garnish but you know that's free food that's way nutritious and you know why i can eat that because i don't spray in my front yard I know exactly what's on the plants around here. I don't put chemical if I don't have to. Yeah, maybe I'll put something on a fire ant nest sometimes through the summer, but that's it really on here. I sprayed for Japanese beetles with soap and water last year. That's how the kind of care because I know I can get food where I live following the seasons. And this is truly the way we're going to have to start thinking. If I'm coming out here day after day saying, oh, you got to get ready for food shortages. You got to start growing your own food. Well, you know, another whole part of that is foraging for your own food during different seasons. Because right now there's a huge amount of leafy greens coming out all over the place. I didn't even get the, uh, the garlic or the onions that's growing wild, although I will tonight for cooking. But I mean, that's coming out too right now. So, you, you know, you got three or four different things in addition to add on just to the, the spinach leaves or the lettuce leaves. And also the nutrition within that, the micronutrients that you just can't get, that's provided by nature from these wild mint plants. So I'm in practice of learning as I'm going in this journey, knowing that I need to get ready. And that's the reason I do the videos because we all need to get ready. And if you're more ready, that's great because then maybe your community next to mine or mine next to yours is more prepared. And then we, everybody can get through this better, easier more comfortably and why not thrive in abundance during this time if everybody had the skills of being able to forge i mean eh, you know you wouldn't go through that fear factor of not being able to buy the food knowing that if you have friends with farms or you know where to get to a farming community or out to a forest you can go find the food at certain times of the year but thousands and hundreds of thousands of people coming out of cities and doing that oh see i don't know how much they would even really know what to look for i mean that the reason I did this is because I've been studying these and they're everywhere right now. I mean, everywhere. So I'm looking at the most abundant natural things that I can turn into something that, and, and the, the thing about this purple dead nettle here, once you turn it into a tincture, like I get poison ivy sometimes clear in the brush. I get bitten by insects. It's all kind of things out here in Southeast US and Tennessee that'll nibble you during the, uh, during the summers, ant bites, mosquito bites, bee stings, you name it, fire ants down there. 
This stuff is uh, a, sort of an antihistamine that'll stop the itching or stop that pain itch from those kind of bites. That's why I'm making that specifically for that. And then I'll put it in the two, in two ounce bottles with the dropper and uh, I'll have that there. Probably, you know, one milliliter or something, you know, maybe uh, eighth of a dropper, quarter of a dropper max, something like that to be able to uh, work with that sting. So that's the whole reason I was doing this. And also you can read about it online. There's a, a huge amount of things that are associated with, in other words, an antibacterial. And you know, if you don't have access to proper medical care, fungus and those types of things, fungals, you don't want around. You want to nip that in the bud as quickly as you can. Well, here's two that do that. So think about fungal infections. If you don't have a way to get to like your CVS or something to get a tube of antifungal cream, then what? So you got to start thinking ahead out here into, you know, kind of like a pioneering lifestyle, like our great grandparents did it. And I got willow barks and, you know, I've been collecting and trying to get things around the property here, learning about the different pine varieties for pine tea, for vitamin C, et cetera, trying to cut into the barks on some of the trees around the property, very limited, but just to get some sap that started to run. So we can get different types of sap from different trees. You know, I'm just, I'm new into the world of sap as well, like collecting sap. Like I'm not a guy who just usually will go and notch a tree and then go and wait and regularly go in my circuit and, and collect it and look for it and look for the color and these sort of things. So it is time to get ready and far more than just stocking up some food because that food's going to run out eventually. It's going to run out. So you're going to have to keep growing it and refilling and finding things to substitute with this quickly going to disappear. This thing in Shanghai already, the port's closing down there. Our supply chains are already so lean, almost, you know, it's barely functional at the base minimum of having enough staff to run base operation just to barely even keep the lights on, on the global supply chains now. Any other thing that cracking in there, it's just, it, it will be the final thing that breaks it. And I, Shanghai could very well be it. So it is time to get ready. I do appreciate you watching. Thanks for your time today. I was trying to do a little business, a little prepping, a little bit of wild foraging, you know, because it is that time of the year. So if you like that style, business update first, and then this, you know, let me know. Oh, and the last thing, to be able to color your yarn, use these as a dye. Dead Nails has this incredible light green natural tinge to it. And if you are thinking about storable foods, my patient supply and adapt 20, 30, 25 year shelf life. And also a mini ice age conversations podcast, anywhere podcast are hosted across the net. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of this video and I will see you next time.